Okay, we'll go ahead and call this public properties meeting to order. Sorry, Jen, I'll let you get situated there. Um, I know we have two items on today's agenda. One is to revisit the Spring Grove Cemetery columbarium wall. And I think mainly, Jansen, we wanted to talk about the, just a quick update on the, I know you emailed us, but yeah. um, we want to talk about the opening fee. Yeah, so <coughs> for the last public properties meeting, um, where we made that motion to move the recommended fee structure, I think it was option, option C, C, I believe. C. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. um, I reviewed that decision with James, uh, which we were good with option C, uh, but the second portion uh, of that uh, recommendation was to revisit the operating or open and closing fees and whether or not we could establish a resident non-resident rate for that and at the time we didn't think of it but afterwards we did um, the open and closing fees are typically fees that are paid for uh, by the funeral home as part of the final internment costs so traditionally we get a check from the funeral home at the time of service uh, and whether or not they're resident non-resident at that time um, isn't really divulged to us unless it's um, a family who may not have done pre-planning and we sell a lot to the family and then at that time they'll pay the open and close fee because there is a you know if you're a service already scheduled so that presents a, lot of, uh, a challenge for us it's something we're not we don't normally do um, and in order to implement that uh, it might be uh, you know, changing the way business is typically done uh, with the funeral home. And the reason why we've allowed the funeral homes to do that is because it makes it easier for the family to write <coughs> one check um, and disperse the funds uh, after the service to the city to get our portion of it. Uh, they also do that with the full companies, um, you know, who also provide the tents, um, things of that nature. So my recommendation would be that we don't entertain that idea after we gave it some more thought so I sent the email because I didn't want to proceed with option C knowing that we couldn't uh, administratively the open and close fee would be challenging to implement. and I should have known I think it was Laura that brought up but I thought it was a great idea but I should have known when I used to work at least yeah. I was one that handed you guys a chart during this <laughs> after the service you know so I should have known that. I apologize, but it was still a good idea, Laura. Is it is it possible to have the actual um, niche prices themselves have a resident non-resident rate? Would that make life easier? It certainly is an option. Um, but when we looked at these prices, we compared it to the way we had sold the first wall, which was a set fee. Um, it wasn't until we looked at other communities. You know, and when I first presented this, there were some communities that have resident, non-resident. There's some that provide engraving. Um, it's kind of all over the board. Um, we didn't take that to the cemetery commission because ultimately, uh, from the finance meeting, I was asked to figure out how to fund the second wall and figure out what we need to do, whether it was increase our prices or change the percentage for the cost of living. So it's certainly something we could do. I don't see it being a huge problem. Most of our resident, non-resident fees are um, about a hundred dollar difference. The only difference, um, just to make you aware, there are some occasions where people tend to take advantage of that uh, if they kind of know the rules. Um, you can technically buy a lot as a city resident, have it deeded to yourself, but then designate it to a friend or family member who's outside the city um, for a burial plot, they just won't receive the deed. So that does happen, not all the time, but uh, enough to where I feel you should be aware of it. Okay. And, and when you came with option C, option C at least made you feel comfortable that financially you'd be able to afford mm -hmm. the next wall then. Right. Which and was um, what we sent you back to do, I guess. Right, right. Right. <coughs> and to date, we only have six unsold, so we've sold three since our last meeting. Oh, great. I thankfully 
the cemetery commission's here as usual, but do you have any comment? I mean, you. Just a commission. I'm just going to die. No, I, I agree with Jansen. I mean, uh, whatever's easiest for them, what makes the paperwork less. Um, I agree that they need to be raised to accommodate the next wall, but how that's done, I think that's an administrative thing that. Same thing as logistically, it'd be put in the hands of the funeral parlor and it's difficult right. to check checks and balance so simplistically, it's the best scenario. Well, I'm okay moving That's forward. I mean, that was our original recommendation was we were going to move forward with option C, but we were sending it, we were going to just have that discussed, I think, at the next cemetery commission, which is tomorrow. Tomorrow. tomorrow yeah. Yeah. And I like the idea of, of having a resident, non-resident, and I think there's obviously certain areas like the rec center that that we can accommodate that by, you know, we have, they have to prove their, their residency when they sign up. This, I mean, like I said, I thought your idea was fantastic, but uh, logistically I can see where it would just, it may not be as fair as we thought it would be. Uh, for at least the two reasons that you mentioned the people and there are a lot of people that, that pre-plan and buy you know several plots or niches in advance uh, and then you know if somebody in their family or, or close relative passes away they can give you know deep one of them over to that so you know. so I, I'm in favor of option C as I was Mr. Gunner, did you have something to add? No, the question I have is who's the responsible to tell the people that you're in the city or you're not? Who, who has that responsibility? The funeral home or the cemetery? Who does right, that? That's, that's right now, the, the reason why I want to bring this back is because that the open and close fee, we don't want the funeral home to be responsible for deciding that. Typically, the way we do lot sales right now is, uh, you know, a resident or non-resident will come to the city, schedule an appointment to buy a lot, and then we'll ask them for documentation, whether it be a water bill uh, or their, ad right. their address that we can look up um, ourselves if they don't have it, um, but to verify that they are a resident. So the, if we move forward with option C, Jerry, we won't need to worry about proving residency for the call and grant wall. That answer your question? No. No. Just how do you use a resident or not? Then? It's not going to matter. There's only one fee, piece, so it doesn't apply. You're not going to have no two rates. Just, just for the wall, Jerry. Oh, not for, okay. Just yeah. the wall. Right. Okay. Not throughout the cemetery. Because that's the way the first wall was sold. Right. Just plain old so many dollars. Correct. Mm -hmm. You're satisfied with it. You just said you like the idea of it. Yeah, well, when, when Laura brought it up at the last uh, meeting when we were discussing this, um, you know, we, we talked about the impracticality of, at the time, trying to, because the funeral homes usually pay for the opening and closing, that, that it was impractical to, or for selling the, the, the niches themselves. And Laura brought up, the, well, what about the opening and closing? Maybe we could have a residential or non-residential only. And again, I thought that was a great idea until afterwards I you know, thought about it. And I remember the like, you know, work. We're trying to help you fund the next one, but at the same time, if it's a logistical nightmare, it's not worth it. Right. And I don't think, at least Laura and I didn't realize that that was how that the funeral home was the one that sent forward the check. I'm, I'm very fortunate I've never had to deal with that, so <laughs> not yet. So, but I'm, I'm good with C as it stands. Okay, so I don't think we need to take any action, Kathy, because that's where we were at last time. We were just waiting to see what the Cemetery Commission said about the resident and non-resident fee for the opening and closing. So I guess you can take that off your agenda tomorrow, and we can move forward with moving this to finance like we had planned last time. Right. Option C. Yeah, option C. Yeah, pretty is, is that good with everybody, then? Mm -hmm. We were just talking about the operating fund. I was just trying to make sure because we're increasing the percentage under option C for the to uh, reserve more money for the future. 
but I just want to make sure with the operating that he was okay that they got a little bit less than what they had. So. It's my understanding. It's good in general. It does. Oh, so you don't get that bad. Great. And who knows, in another 20 years, there might be something goes on that the concrete costs will go down. Doubtful. <laughs> <laughs> well, the you other the, the other thing is that Teresa mentioned it last week is uh, Benicky and, and Associates who's helping us with the second wall. Traditionally, their estimates are on the high end, high, right? So the the estimate on the high end for the next wall is eighty five thousand. So this option will give us eighty seven. Right. Okay. Good. So. So we don't need to move. The, the I just wanted to update it to make right. sure that okay. we were all okay with uh, moving forward as is. Uh, Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome to stay. Thanks, but no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, Teresa. <laughs> All right. Well, our second item is the uh, Parks Department reorganization. Anson, do you want to outline? I know, obviously, it involves your job, the superintendent's job, the uh, bringing back the foreman job, and then also reclassifying the. I think the MOE position. Uh, it's a full-time labor position. Okay. So, um, bear with me while I get some papers on here. So the request to reorganize the parks department uh, came from the recent retirement that we had, um, and it's kind of what is presented to you has been in the works for uh, a little bit of time now. Uh, so basically when I was made aware that the superintendent was intending to retire. Um, what I originally started out doing was surveying other communities to see how their parks departments were structured to kind of use our resources around Northeast Ohio. and. Uh, I surveyed uh, Wadsworth, Westlake, Aurora, Brunswick, and Hudson, um, all of their parks departments. What I found is there was no real consistency with how each one of those uh, cities' departments were structured because it's kind of, they're very unique. So some of them were just strictly parks department, um, parks department who runs, also runs a golf course, parks and recreation department, parks forestry, parks cemetery. <coughs> So um, it provided me with some information, but really uh, what needed to be done was I kind of needed to curtail what the needs for our department are uh, individually because it too is different than all of those uh, having uh, the park side of it, forestry and cemetery. Um, so when I looked at the needs for the parks department um, over the last four years, a lot, a lot has, has changed, and the, the biggest problem that we had in our park side, when, and when I say park side, I mean just all of the parks and recreation side of it, not forestry and cemetery. So when I first started, we had a superintendent, and then we had two full-time laborers and five part-time laborers underneath him. And the challenge is that I uh, was made aware of over <coughs> the last four years was that we had, a, we had one individual who knew a lot of mechanical knowledge um, in the field, and that was a little bit problematic when we had uh, things break down after hours or on the weekends. Uh, so in order to fix that at that time, um, I kind of had to have my hands in on things and be a little bit more involved with the inner workings of the department, which has worked out well because they gained a lot of, inter a lot of knowledge and experience uh, over uh, the course of uh, a number of years. Um, so when I looked at the need, uh, what first stuck in my mind is that we need to have at least two people in the department that know the inner workings of everything besides just the, you know, the daily maintenance in the summer. We have a lot of mechanical uh, amenities uh, that require um, a lot of expertise in order to do preventative maintenance and make sure they're functioning properly. So you got 
you know, two splash pads. We now have a swimming pool. We have irrigation systems. We have athletic field lighting. Um, and there's all kinds of moving parts and all that. And uh, we need to have at least two people in the department that can perform maintenance on those. Um, so that was the biggest uh, objective that I was trying to accomplish with restructuring was to make sure that we can you know, be guaranteed that we have two people that are skilled in those facets. So the way that things were four years ago, um, we would basically get you know, part-time union eligible in the department. There's a lot of turnover with those positions, especially when um, you know, you, you're taking seasonal employees and transitioning them over. Um, and then eventually a full-time position would come open and be open to those part-time individuals. And you know, sometimes you, you could get uh, people who went above and beyond, and you know, that's the route that they wanted to go. But um, changing some job descriptions around will give us the ability to ensure that we have um, people with uh, the right skill set in the positions moving forward. So to give you a little bit of background on some of the changes that have happened since 2014, before 2014, in 2009, as uh, Councilman Shields mentioned, there used to be a foreman and a superintendent in the department. Uh, a superintendent, uh, Position became available, the foreman got promoted, and the foreman position was abolished. And the former superintendent, Don Lahoden, um, you know, we talked on a daily basis, and one of his concerns right from the get go when I first started working with him day to day was that he needed another person in the department that he could trust to go out and do stuff and uh, outside of the general maintenance. Uh, so when you have one person that is, you know, really skilled in fixing everything, there's a lot of needs in the summertime and you kind of have to prioritize who's going where and, and what. Um, so in 2014 when I first took over in the department, uh, we, prior to when I took over, there was a clerk who split her time between parks and the rec center. And when I started in the department back in January of 2014, that clerk was moved to full-time, well, part-time capacity with 100% of the work devoted to the Parks Department. So at that time we took over the invoicing because that was being dispersed um, amongst some rec center employees. And in order to have better control and uh, I guess knowledge of what was going on in the department, I felt that that was something that we needed to do. So we've taken over the responsibility of all the invoicing um, requisitions and everything for the department. Um, and then in 2014, we changed a part-time position to a turf tech position uh, because that was one of the areas where I was concerned when I took over because we have a turf management program and we didn't have a dedicated person that could do the applications other than the superintendent at the time. So that was one thing I was trying to take away from him and accomplish by creating a part-time position. And then in 2015, we worked to reclassify the city arborist position because we had an individual working in there once I had moved up uh, and then they had moved on. So I wanted to bring in, uh, open the pool up to a wider pool of candidates. So we took away the education requirement because the work was transitioning to mostly uh, doing uh, forestry work in-house in -house versus contractual. So uh, we lowered the pay grade and I assumed those administrative duties for the forestry department because I really had never stopped doing them because uh, I literally trained an employee and then we got a new one um, and, and it wasn't any more work um, but having this person solely focused on what's going on in the field and dealing with complaints uh, it's worked out really well um, when this individual got the Ar city arborist got hired we also made a special job description for the tree care technician who uh, is also a part-time employee. And that was another position. Prior to being parks director, I was the city arborist for about eight years and went through, I believe it was six or seven employees in that eight year period. So we would change the job descriptions so we could hire somebody who might already have that skill set to avoid some of the training. 
Um, it's worked out really well. And then in 2016, we moved our parks office from the rec center to the cemetery to help with the um, collaboratively, collaboratively help with uh, customer service and improving the functions at the cemetery. Uh, prior to that, there, there was a cemetery sexton and part-time employee in our forestry department down there. Very seldom would a family from out of town be able to come straight into the office and get help to find a grave. And that was a pretty big uh, challenge and something that I definitely wanted to correct. And uh, by moving down there, it's really helped all the communication amongst all three departments because they no longer have to come to a third satellite location, which is just where the administrative functions are going on. So it's enabled us to work well together, um, have open communication without you know, the need to call somebody um, and uh, help spread the work out as people take off or you know, uh, work is increasing one department than another. So that kind of takes us to where we're at right now. So when looking at that history and then looking at the needs of the department, um, a lot of the administrative functions of the superintendent were being done uh, in our office when it comes to managing uh, the material requisitions, purchasing, uh, and then looking at capital planning and projects and things of that nature. The way we were structured in 2014, I believe I include that, included that with the request. Original plan was to have the superintendent kind of oversee the three departments so that I would have the time uh, administratively to deal with all the meetings and the public and things of that nature. And what I found through throughout you know, the several years working was that the way things have transitioned with our sports associations, with online registration, um, and, and things of that nature, there's been some work that has been taken away, and then I've taken some more on uh, myself, and we've been able to do it, uh, you know, with the same group of group of staff essentially. So the proposed structure for 2018 uh, shows the parks foreman position. Uh, being at the same level as our sexton and our arborist, which I think is pretty important when you look at the, the structure and the way things were being done and how the communication has been going in the various departments. And then I kind of broke out the Parks Department a little bit further just for your benefit to see how we disperse these part-time laborers and kind of, since you're dealing with a seasonal, primarily a seasonal department, um, you know, we're busy from April through about the end of October and then things slow down and it's preventative maintenance and doing shop work, things of that nature. So when we're at our peak, this is what our structure is because you have to delegate certain responsibilities of the job to part-time employees who are essentially our leaders in the field with all of our seasonal employees. So the two needs was one, reclassify uh, the superintendent to a foreman position um, not only for cost savings, but to uh, basically be more in line with how things were functioning and be that go-to person in the field for the parks department. Um, a lot of the planning, the communication with residents, things of that nature, that all goes through our uh, office, um, the parks office, uh, myself and the clerk. Um, and then the second part of this restructuring request is to add, uh, once we have a retirement of, in the two full, one of the two full-time labor positions, is to restructure or reclassify that position as a maintenance tech, which will have its own specific job description, um, similar to, uh, not entirely similar to what they do in the water department, but very close to where it's a job specific. So if there's an opening, obviously full-time people can put in for it. Um, if they're qualified, obviously they'll you know, be afforded the opportunity to move up. Uh, or um, if there's nobody currently employed, it gives us the ability to find somebody um, who might be able to fit the needs for that position. Um, so I kind of divided it up that way. Our floater for the three departments is on the lawn maintenance side. And the reason for that is it's, uh, 
it is, I mean, it's a skilled position. Um, they have to know a little bit about all three departments, but we need to have a full-time person in, in the growing season to keep up with our lawn maintenance uh, and our athletic fields. But then once that season dies down, they automatically go over to the forestry department. We've been doing that for two years now. And it's worked out really well with keeping up with our pruning and things right. of that nature. So um, this is my recommendation to move forward. Um, I could go over the changes in the job descriptions if you'd like briefly. The main, some of the main changes were, uh, minor changes were the who, uh, like for, for example, the arborist, the sexton, the turf technician is just changing who they're reporting to, along with some other minor changes. The foreman's job description, I did it add in there that uh, we prefer Class A CDLs and the reason for that um, because that's not something we typically require in a water department. You have to have it for their vehicle, <coughs> but we did just purchase a <coughs> truck for the forestry department and when it's hooked up to the wood chipper you have to have a combination uh, vehicle license. I want to make sure we have at least two of the three people in the department have Class A CDL, so if an emergency happens, one's not available, another person can step right. in. Um, and then in the, in the foreman position, I noted that their primary responsibility is to make sure all the mechanical features are, are up and running and doing the preventative maintenance, as well as the need to have some carpentry experience and uh, things of that nature. Uh, and then if you look at all three of the, the I guess, part division heads, if you will, um, they're all interchangeable. So if the sexton's gone in the foreman position, it says that the foreman is to assist the sexton. Um, if the foreman is absent, uh, two of those three positions are in management. One is a union position, which is the sexton. So if the foreman's gone, the, park, the city arborist, or myself, if it's a busy season, fill in for him, vice versa. Um, so there's a little bit cleaner line of uh, how the responsibilities get divided. Um, other than that, um, the potential cost savings for the change would be approximately uh, $15,000 when the department, or when the two positions are topped out, depending on their hospitalization and longevity pay. Um, so that's kind of where it's at. Uh, if you have any questions, <laughs> that was kind of all over the place. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's, it's a lot going on here. Let me just so I can. I'm following your chart here. So the sexton is James, correct? And Curtis is the yes. in the uh, arborist position. Correct. And then this parks foreman would technically be Don's old job. Correct. Just changed it. Yeah. Okay. When you go down one level, like who's your Full-time maintenance tech is that Chris? That position is not filled. That's right future. Now. That's future. future. So right now we have two full-time labor okay. positions. Okay. And and those two full-time that one is the labor lawn maintenance. Yes. And one is the. Uh, <coughs> Floater. We, yeah. They're both on the same level. Do you, do you so, know names? Is that really? Yeah, I was just trying to just so I can picture okay. it. Gore. Gordon is one, and Ladke, Chris Ladke is the other. Okay. Is Chris Beal still in your department? No. He's in water. Water. Water tech. How long has Gordon been there? Uh, it's been on and off. Uh, he was here in the 80s and then left, came back, and he's got 28 years in the section. So, so, Jansen, the full time labor lawn maintenance floater, that is there right now? Yes. Okay, and that's, that's Gordon? It's Chris Ladke. Chris. Blaine. And then the full-time turf technician? It's part-time turf technician. Part-time. That's Paul Dudek. Okay. Where's your other full-time position? Which one is your other full-time right now? It's, the way it's broke out right here is how the structure, how I intend it to be. Oh, it, not, okay. It's not how it is right now. Okay, but you're talking about the other is the full-time labor cemetery? Yes, right now we have two full-time laborers in parks and they both do lawn maintenance. Okay. And the rest of the work is divided amongst part-time staff. 
So if this was approved, would you move one of them over to the to the cemetery one, or no? There's already somebody in that that's full time. There's already James Hort as the cemetery sexton. None of this, none of the the transition to uh, maintenance technician will not happen until there is a vacancy. One, one of the laborers. One of yeah. the laborers. Okay. Council President Coyne requested that I turn in everything at once rather than come back. Sure. Which, why am I not seeing, which one is Gordon? Which position represents what Gordon is right now? You have to look at 2014. You have to look at 2014. Okay. okay. And I'm looking at the, the current one. Okay. So there are two. There's a full-time labor, very top, above the turf technician, at the very bottom. And when you say the $15,000 cost savings, does that include or is it too, you can't say yet when the laborers are gone and you've switched them to the um, <coughs> the maintenance technician? So the, the $15,000, I didn't include the spreadsheet with the packet, but um, the $15,000 savings is as proposed on the organizational chart. The 2018. Okay. Correct. So That'll be both the full time, there'll be the foreman at 37F and the full time maintenance technician at 32F. But the maintenance technician, you can't do anything about that now. Correct, until there's a vacancy. Okay. Okay, I think I understand how about the questions. What? I don't even know where to start with yeah. my questions. <laughs> well, the only thing I'd like to say is, as usual, uh, you guys have done a phenomenal job of, of organizing this. So, I mean, I, I was able to understand it because I've my entire career I've worked with the chain of command. And uh, And that's what this is. You know, your organizational chart is basically a chain of command of uh, who does what, who reports to who, who's responsible for what. Uh, and I, I, it, 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 I just I think you've done a really good job there, and I, I, uh, I'm sure you've worked it out to where where things should run more s smoothly for you. And I and I understand Mr. Lahoten uh, was a real asset to your department, and you hated losing him, but it does afford you an opportunity to restructure and and formalize this chain of command I, again. Kudos to you and Nino and whoever else helped you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. If I could, Jim, like Jans is very humble, but a number of the things since he's taken over the department, for one thing, we combined the three divisions to, to give him flexibility and, and moving staff around. But then the other things that kind of out of nowhere were the requests of the residents for deer, deer counts and deer studies and all that. So he's absorbed all that. And then the Ashford situation where we had to go through the city and systematically in the past five years um, work out a manageable plan to, to remove and replace um, maybe not every tree, but, but every one of the ash trees was removed. And a number of them were replaced with a variety of species because of the lessons uh, that, that were learned with that. And then the um, the monarch butterfly and bee plantings, uh, wildflowers, and uh, certain types of, of flowers to promote uh, and enhance the, the monarchs and, and the bees uh, for the betterment of, of, of the um, ecosystem. Uh, you know, again, he's he's taken that and, <coughs> Excuse me. and done very well with it. So, well, and, and I, I don't think the residents are aware of it. I know I wasn't until my tenure here, but to, to see how well the departments interact. Uh, and it may happen in other communities. I don't think it happens as, as, as well as it does in Medina. I mean, uh, a perfect example was the, the 
the building collapsed to see all the organizations from the city there, you know, taking taking control of the situation. But it's the same thing when we have a, a bad weather incident or or whatever it may be, uh, trees down, lines down. I mean, I, you guys just seem to organize everything, working together, and it's not specifically just the parts department that's taking care of the public square. Uh, I mean, I you know. Depending on the situation, you see uh, all different employees that's uh, chipping in, and the same thing. You know, the cemetery, and you know, that's Jerry and I's baby. Uh, it it always looks spectacular, even in the in the worst of weather, it, it, compared to any other cemetery in driving distance in our area. You're not going to find one that, that is as well kept as as ours. And the same with the, all the parks. I mean, you, as you mentioned and the mayor mentioned. You know, we've got a new pool, two new splash pads. Uh, those in themselves, uh, that's, that's a lot of responsibility. And I, it's, like I said, take my hats off, take my hat off not only to you and your department, but to the Nino's department and the engineering department. You can go right down the, 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 the list, but uh, if it wasn't for the cooperation between the departments, I don't think any of you would be getting the kudos for me as I, I always intend to get excited. I do honestly feel that it's the cooperation uh, between departments that make you all know, the organizational chart or the chain of command. You, did, you guys did a nice job. I was going to say, I just want to follow up one second there. And, you know, Jansen, I just want to make sure because I've always thought, obviously, I've been on public properties here all my years on council, and I <coughs> thought the parks director job was a big job. And then when you took it over, we added more to it. Right. And then since then, we've added the pool, we've added another splash pad, the other things with the mayor. So, what I, and I'm sure, I know you mentioned John Coyne already weighed in, and I'm sure as soon as he heard the $15,000 cost savings, oh, sounds like a great plan. <laughs> but I want to make sure for your sake that we're not overwhelming you because uh, you do a great job, and how you juggle it all and make it all work is very impressive, and I appreciate it. But I also want to make sure we're not burning you out here by continually adding to this. and. You know, is this going to help you? Do you truly feel like this? This is this is going to help. Um, the biggest problem that I had over the last four years was having only one person to call if there was a problem in the parks department. And whether that individual was on vacation or I was on vacation, there was always only one person. Um, we'd made some changes two years ago to require Saturday staffing. Uh, which may have fixed some of our problems, but if, you know the overtime calls where you might not be in Medina and the splash pad's broken and it's a relatively simple fix, but you can't get a hold of the right person right. to get it fixed. Um, so getting, having the ability to call two people, um, having a way to, you know, if you have a skilled person in part-time capacity a position comes open and they might not have the seniority, but they have the ability to do the technical side of the job, having a way for them to, you know, to be able to maybe take advantage of their knowledge and skill set for applying for a position. Um, Denny kind of mentioned it, you know, we, we do work collaboratively on a lot of things. And the one thing that, um, you know, I'm very appreciative of is the rec center collaboration with the splash pads and the pool because they're running the pool. Uh, that used to be something that was on the director, and I know it may or may not have actually happened that way, but um, the way it's going now is uh, very good. We've got a good working relationship with Mike, and his staff does our daily checks of the smash pads. So that frees us <coughs> up, and, and we essentially pay for their wages to do that out of the parks budget. So it gives, using their knowledge and skills, so I don't have my seasonals going out and servicing um, something that a lifeguard is already trained to do, or a, um, you know, aquatics manager. So there's, it's a give and take, uh, but it's, I'm fairly, you know, I'm confident, otherwise I wouldn't have said that this is the way I think things should be. Um, there's been a lot, a lot that has changed, there's been a lot that's been added. Um, and the sports associations, you guys know as well as I do, that that has changed a lot over the years from 
you know, the township's not even off offering that, and we were charging more money for a township. Um, and that was an administrative nightmare to try and keep track of all that. That has since changed, and um, that's given me a little bit more flexibility. But yeah, I'm confident that um, I like to be out in the office and have my hands in on stuff, and that a lot of times that kind of reflects to um, the amount of work that you see getting done and things of that nature. It helps prioritize projects, stuff like that. Um, so I'm confident that, you know, Fixing the um, the issue with only having one person is going to be a huge burden off my shoulders. And council members just went through that with basically <clears throat> restructuring the uh, chain of command for the police department. Make, I mean, it, it, it just makes sense. Uh, you know, there the police chief was saying you had one person to go to uh, instead of the previously there were were two. A little bit different situation, but. The same philosophy. You, know, you just uh, uh, two foremen, two lieutenants. But you call them what you want to. But it's it's the chain of command, and and it divides the responsibility a little bit. And can make life easier for you, but on the other hand, it also creates two people instead of one that you can you can contact for updates and information. So, good job. You know, did you have something? <coughs> uh, you hit on pretty much what I was, the road I was going to go down, but it, to Jansen's, Jansen's uh, credit, he doesn't have the, uh, the folks that we have. We have seven supervisors in service, so I have foremen, superintendents, so what skill set lacks here, we can call this other guy, and, and you have that coverage, so to speak. Um, he didn't have that. Um, this, this is headed in the right direction with respect to building um, job descriptions with a certain skill set. Moving that way, similar as the reference to water. Um, it, it just works, it just works uh, efficiently. It's just a better, a better service in the long run. And I know, Mayor, we looked at a lot of different, we talked a lot of different things, so you feel good this is, this really does reflect where it needed to end up and yes, sir. what's best for the city. Yes, sir. Paul, did you? Uh, the other thing, you, you hit on what I, I was concerned with, and I asked Jensen that the other day on the way into the meeting, if it was too much for him. Um, I have every confidence that he can handle it, and knowing from my own structures that I've worked with, the more people you have to go to, the better it is for you. So it, it lightens the love. Many, many hands lighten the, make the work light. So. Well, no, I, and uh, I agree with you. I also feel that it's, it's better for the employees, too. Not only with the defined, I mean, we've had job descriptions, but a more defined job description for the requirements to uh, what you need to work in that uh, specific area. If that specific area comes open, uh, it, you'll know right away, the employee will know right away or be before it happens that, hey, I want to work towards getting my CDL or what. So if that position does come open, I can be a step up for them. So, I mean, it's, I think it's good all the way around. All right, no, this is, this is good for you because it's the first time you've seen this. Any questions? Or? Well, no, I don't have any questions, but uh, but I do agree with having having more people because as we're talking, I'm thinking about my 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 employee structure, and I have one person. If she's out, I'm in trouble. So, yeah. um, so I, I do understand exactly having <clears throat> having spread spread that out and having more people to go to with better skill sets, and um, so and, and the fifteen thousand dollar savings is always a good thing. So. If everybody else is in agreement that this is going to work for your department, Chancellor, then I think it's a good idea. Anybody else have any comments? Matt's looking at it. You're, you're needy over there. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to skirt for many of these. I can figure out how you can spend that 15 <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you give to, you we got give lots James of and full time Sky so they can straighten stones. <laughs> We got lots of ideas for that fifteen thousand. Yeah. So I, so I, does Mr. Coyne though. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, okay. so I move to approve the restructuring of the parts <laughs> department as presented by uh, Mr. Worley. Have a second. I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Same side. Okay. Anything else for the committee? Yeah, we gave you a half hour to get ready for the next meeting. Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right.
right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Captain, for all your work. Yeah.